Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I am back in the kitchen and I am using up some more of this donated ham. So don't y'all want to see what I'm going to do with it this time? Well, let me give you a little hint. How about some ham and potato soup? So let's get started. So I'm going to start with peeling, um, let's see, I have one, two, three, about five potatoes. Four of them are, are fairly small. Um, now, if you wanted to make just the potato soup, of course, you would probably want to use more potatoes, but I'm going to be adding my ham to this, so uh, I don't really need that many potatoes. These have already been scrubbed with a brush. They're nice and clean, so I just have to peel them and dice them, and then I'm going to um, saute a small onion and some butter, and then throw in a couple of shredded carrots to give it some color and sweeten the soup up a little bit. I would mostly use that leftover ham for red beans or some type of uh, big old white northern beans or lima beans or something like that, more so than making soup. We, we were not big soup people, but since, you know, living down in the south, it's, to me, soup is more like a winter dish. So with it being so hot down there, I really didn't cook soup that often. These just don't look like enough potatoes. Let me wash and peel one more. Okay, so I ended up dicing six, uh, kind of about that big around, small potatoes. I think one was, was a little more like a medium size. So about six potatoes. Um, and then I diced two, two small carrots, or one large one, however, whatever you have in your fridge or your root cellar. And then this is about a cup of diced onions, which is one onion. So I have the fire on underneath my pot, and you want a fairly big saucepan. And I'm going to start with a half a stick of butter. You can use lard or bacon grease, Crisco, whatever you prefer. But we're going to brown the onions in the um, half a stick of butter first. Um, now we'll be boiling. Some people do boil their potatoes before they make the cream sauce for them, but I'm just going to cook everything together. And then I'll add the, the milk and the flour at the very end and just cream it up a little bit. Like I was saying, we didn't eat a whole lot of um, soups, you know, down in South Mississippi. So my subscribers that still live down in Mississippi, you can let me know if you cook soup and if you cook it only in the winter time. <laughs> I don't know what it is, it's just something about cold weather that, you know, makes you want to, um, to eat a big old bowl of hot soup, especially tomato soup. So let's go ahead and start, um, we're not going to really brown the onions, we're just going to cook them until they're kind of translucent. Get some of that delicious aroma and flavor out of these onions. So, uh, how's everybody's New Year starting off? <laughs> Mine's kind of slow and just trying to regroup and think about what direction I want my channel to go this year. Um, let me show you how well these onions are cooking. Mm -mm, they sure do smell good. So to this I'm going to add the carrots. Now I'm not doing, um, I do have celery in the fridge but I'm not going to put celery in it because I want this just to be a basic soup. So, you know, if you're hungry and you don't have much to eat, you can always go out, go down in the, the root cellar and get you a, a few carrots and a few potatoes and maybe a turnip root or whatever you got in there and, and make you up a big old pot of hearty soup. And usually, um, you know, if you have a smokehouse like we used to have back in the 50s, 40s and 50s, you could go out there and get you... Uh, some ham hock and, and throw in it. I am going to be using some of my leftover ham. This is the donated ham that I have that I have frozen. And y'all, I still have at least half of that ham <laughs> in the freezer. That's going to last me probably another six months. Y'all are going to get tired of my ham recipes. Now the soup itself is going to cook probably 30 or 45 minutes. So I don't really have to cook these a whole lot, and I definitely don't want to burn my butter. So let me go ahead and put the carrots in. 
Well, I sure had fun making that um, craft project for my new apartment. Okay, so we're just going to let the carrots cook for just a minute and the onions cook a little bit more. I think I will throw my ham in here. I mean, let the ham cook and some of that saltiness get into it. I may not even have to add any salt to this dish. Isn't it turning beautiful? Carrots are so pretty. Okay, so I think by the time I get the ham in here and let it brown up a little bit, it's already cooked. Y'all know I baked it. And then we'll throw the potatoes in and a couple of cups of water and then just let this simmer and I'll be bumming around the house cleaning and answering comments today and smelling this delicious soup. So I'm going to pause this while it browns so y'all don't have to spend so much time. Okay, this is browned very nicely. So let's go ahead and add the potatoes. And then we'll add a couple of cups of water and then we'll just let this cook very slow for about 35 or 45 minutes. I don't really have to brown the ham because it's already fully cooked. Okay, so we're going to add the potatoes and then um, we'll just cover all of this in water. One little stray potato. Turn the fire up, get this to going. I'm getting hungry, y'all, so I gotta get it to get a move on. Okay, it's probably gonna take about three cups of water, maybe more. There we go, three cups of water. I'm not gonna salt it. I'm going to wait until it's cooked, and then I will taste it. Like I said, this song, I did not boil the salt out of the ham before I cooked it, so it is very, very salty. Now, if you want to fry up some bacon or you have a can of bacon grease sitting on your stove top, then by all means, um, brown your onions and, and carrots and everything in your bacon grease. Or if you fry up some bacon, then save the bacon, and you can crumble it and put it on like a garnish on top of your soup. Okay, so I'm going to cover this and then I'll be back in 45 minutes and we'll check it. Okay, so the potatoes have been cooking for about uh, almost an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so now I'm going to add two cups of milk to this mixture and to the milk I'm going to add a teaspoon of flour because I want to make sure that my um, soup is nice and creamy. Now all you good cooks out there know you have to add your cornstarch or your flour to a cold, cold milk or cold water. Okay, so let me just add this mixture slowly while I stir. Boy, the carrot sure gave it a beautiful color. And the yellow from the butter. Let's let this thicken up a little bit. And I did, um, with my free box of food that the apartment association gives everyone, they gave me the chef's table milk this time. I was happy to get it, too. Okay, so the exact thing happened that I expected to happen, and that is that a lot of the water cooked out of the ham. Now, I only added the one cup of milk. I really don't think another cup of milk would thicken it up. So I'm just going to go ahead and eat it like it is now. But I think if you used just potatoes and uh, maybe if your ham, you know, if you boil the water out of it or you have a regular shoulder ham or butt portion ham, then it shouldn't have some butter in it. But let me go ahead and um, dip some in the bowl and let me give it a taste. Okay, so I had a little bit of shredded um, white cheddar cheese in the fridge, so I just sprinkled a little bit of that. <laughs> I'm spilling it everywhere. Now I gotta clean my floor. So I just sprinkled a little bit of that on top. Let me taste it. Mmm, mmm, it sure smells good. 
Are y'all like me? Every time you cook a meal, you have to sweep them off your kitchen floor. <laughs> no matter how careful I am, I always make a mess in the kitchen. It's okay. The mess, the the worse the mess, the better the food tastes, right? I just got this out of that boiling pot. It's it's hot. It never did thicken up. Oh. I forgot to tell y'all to make sure you add on um, about a half teaspoon of salt. Even with the salty ham, I ended up having to add some salt. I want to get a bite of the ham this time. It's good, y'all. You got to try this easy, simple recipe. So y'all please give me a thumbs up and share my videos with at least one family member, one friend. I get about 2,000 views, two to 3,000 views per video. So if each of y'all shared my video and got one of your friends or family members to subscribe, that would get me up over 25,000 subs and then I will have an email contact to YouTube and that's what I really need so y'all uh, please share my videos like I just asked you to and y'all just keep on coming back bye guys